One day in the future, there will no longer be rich people acting like dicks. But that day isn't here yet, so our work must continue. Lots of good rich dick nominations on social media this week. A few of you nominated former and incoming Starbucks CEO Howard Schultz, including Brian, one of the badass organizers behind the Starbucks union campaign up in Buffalo. Something tells me we'll have more opportunity to crown Schultz as a rich dick when he formally takes over at Starbucks next month and proceeds to union bust. Also nominated Nancy Pelosi for reading that god-awful poem about Ukraine written by Bono. Cringe so hard listening that I injured a few vertebrae. Of course, Elon Musk was nominated. The world's richest man has been melting down online since news broke that his girlfriend Grimes left him for Chelsea Manning. Also, the last surviving Koch brother was nominated. I think it's Charles who's still alive. The fossil fuel baron is always worthy of a nomination. All good suggestions. Any one of them could have received the dishonors, but ultimately one man stands above them all. This week's Rich Dick is... Senator Joe Manchin. Thanks to those of you who nominated him on Twitter, the sentient lump of coal announced this week that he would oppose President Biden's nominee to be vice chair of supervision at the Federal Reserve, Sarah Bloom Raskin. Manchin said he would be a no vote because of prior comments Raskin made about climate change. Because of the makeup of the Senate, Democrats can't afford any defections on nominees, so Raskin was forced to withdraw her name. What exactly did she say that was so egregious? Well, like a good Democrat, Raskin had called for a transition away from fossil fuels, but crucially vowed to not do anything about it as a financial regulator. She said during confirmation hearings that she simply wants the Fed to take into account climate change when calculating financial institutions' risks. And that's all it took for Manchin to sink her nomination. His office released a statement on Monday saying, quote, Raskin's previous public statements have failed to satisfactorily address my concerns about the critical importance of financing and all of the above energy policy to meet our nation's critical energy needs. Translation, I personally make tons of money from the coal industry. Manchin disclosed that in 2020, he held between $1 and $5 million in a coal brokerage firm that he founded called Enersystems. Last year, that yielded him $491,000, almost three times his annual salary as a U.S. senator. So that's what's really driving this. Manchin trying to secure the future of an industry that has made him and his family insanely rich, no matter the risk it poses to the survival of the human species. It's this greed that also spurred Manchin to make stupid as shit comments about electric cars. He attended an energy conference in Houston where he came out against replacing gas guzzling cars with electric ones. Quote, I'm very reluctant to go down that path of electric vehicles, Manchin said. I'm old enough to remember standing in line in 1974 trying to buy gas. I remember those days. I don't want to have to be standing in line waiting for a battery for my vehicle because we're now dependent on a foreign supply chain, mostly China. Okay, first off, you won't be standing in line for anything, Joe. You pay other people to do that stuff for you. Second off, how is that scenario any worse than the current one? Paying $5 a gallon for gas from Saudi Arabia that's slowly choking the planet. Cole Barron then added, quote, I've read history and I remember Henry Ford inventing the Model T, but I sure as hell don't remember the U.S. government building filling stations. The market did that. Okay, that's just bullshit. Since they were discovered, fossil fuels have been heavily subsidized by the government. We're talking hundreds of billions of dollars to help make the discovery, extraction, refinement, and then sale of gasoline profitable for capitalists. The U.S. government still forks over tens of billions of dollars annually in subsidies to the fossil fuel industry. A 2011 study from a venture capital firm, DBL Investors, found that over the last 100 years, coal and oil barons have received on average nearly $5 billion in government assistance every single year. Fossil fuels have been subsidized by public dollars far, far more than any other renewable energy source, and it's not even close. 
Manchin also forgets about the half trillion dollars the government spent building a transportation network to accommodate automobiles. Talking, of course, about the interstate highway system. The free market didn't build that. Manchin, of course, knows all this. He just thinks that you don't. The stakes couldn't be higher right now. The survival of virtually every living thing on Earth depends on us moving away from dirty energy sources that Manchin profits from. Rich Dick doesn't even begin to describe the behavior of a man holding the planet hostage so he can make upgrades to his yacht. But it will suffice for now. Joe Manchin, this week's Rich Dick. Hey, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of our new videos. Also, if you want to see Means Morning News in its complete form, not just the clips we post here, head on over to Means TV and get access to all our new episodes and our entire backlog, plus tons of other great movies and original TV shows.